We would like to welcome you to this online worship service at Trinity Lutheran Church in Bellingham, Washington. Today, we are celebrating LWM Mel Sunday, Lutheran Women's Missionary League. We are an organization here at Trinity, but not only here, but across the nation at Missouri Synod Lutheran Churches, the women are at work doing mission work, absolutely mission work. They want to get that message out that God loves everyone, and he proved that by sending his son. It's not only something that we want to get out, but as we gather for worship, we celebrate. And so let's lift up our voices as we praise this God who has shown us great love as well. Come, sing along with us. Filled with God's holy fire. It's 
every tribe, every tongue, every nation, a love song born of a grateful choir. It's all about children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all about children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. Then he rise above the voice, caught up in the heavenly sound. The praises echo from the towers of the needles to the faithful gathered under the crown. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none were true with them. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. And all the powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard. Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out It's all about children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all about children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. Well, I'll let the people in on a little secret, and that is this. With the weather getting a little bit colder at night, Kim and I will at times put on a quilt. Wrap up, wrap up in a quilt. Cozy, cozy quilt. And it reminds us that to put a quilt together, you put various textures and colors and whatever, all these little pieces together. And quilts are amazing and they're even more beautiful when they are put together with hands that truly love us. And I think that's what celebrating Quilt Sunday, LWML, and all the things that the women do here at this church, it's a great, great thing to think about. Yeah, we talked earlier about how we want the love of Christ to be shown to others. And uh, we do that by explaining that he died for us. But we also seek to warm people up. And we have a group of ladies at our church that make wonderful mm -hmm. quilts, which we, uh, we acknowledge as well today. And we ask that God would bless them. That as they would look upon the work of these quilts, they would also see the handiwork of God, which is even more amazing, he created us. This God who created us is a God who cares for us. And so let us now go to him in prayer with our praises as well as our concerns. Almighty God, you search our hearts and have seen our sin, yet you have established peace with us through your Son. Empower us by your Holy Spirit so that we may grow in our praise and love of you. Guide our congregation in life and witness. Give us your grace so that in a land where strife is far too common, we will be a place of peace. Unite us in your love and help us to extend your welcome to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the mission of the LWML Lutheran Women's Missionary League in this congregation and throughout the world. We ask that every heart will beat with your love and all hearts extend your hand of service to others. May Lutheran Women in Mission continue to encourage us to gladly give. Bless the giving of the mites and offerings so that others may come to trust in Jesus as their Savior. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for everything that contributes to supporting life here on earth, for ourselves as well as for everyone else. We pray for food and health, 
for housing and clothing, for employment, good weather, for justice and peace in our community and nation. St. Paul learned to be content in whatever situation he found himself in. We ask that we too may know your peace in our hearts in every time of abundance and in every time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Send relief to all who are experiencing sickness, loneliness, depression, and loss. Today we remember Tomo, Henry, Mike, Caden and Colton, John, Becky, Donna, Don and Vicki, Brad, and Anna. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask that you would answer our prayers according to your will and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson comes from the 36th chapter of Ezekiel. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great na name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among you. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses and from all your idols I will cleanse you and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my laws. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson comes from the first chapter of First Peter. And, I will, and if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, that like a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is from Mark 12. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. One day when heaven was filled with his praise 
Jesus. One day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The Word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today in our congregation, we are observing LWML Sunday. That stands for Lutheran Women's Missionary League. It is an organization that has members throughout North America, 
as well as members in our congregation. And as their name suggests, they're all about missions, about getting the message of God's love in Jesus Christ out to all people. And one of the ways that they seek to do this is by collecting money to support mission work. They call it collecting their mites, which may mean collecting small coins or dollars and, and putting them away and then combining them with others. And it's amazing how you could take some small things, small gifts, and as you add them together, it becomes larger and you're able to do great things with it. That happens not only with money, but with other things in life as well. It's amazing how small acts of kindness and care, when done over and over again, can lead to great things. And in the scripture lesson for today, that is what St. Peter is encouraging us to do. He writes in the fourth chapter of his first letter, above all, keep on loving one another earnestly. I believe we all appreciate receiving genuine love. It is something which warms our heart. It comforts us. And oftentimes then we respond to that love by loving others. This past week in Bellingham, we've experienced a wide variety of weather. Some would say it is typical weather for the Northwest in the fall. On Monday, we had this beautiful sunny day. And I took advantage of it later on in the day by mowing my lawn and and taking a walk outside. But things changed by Tuesday. Strong winds came, it rained, it was blustery, and the temperature dropped. Now when you experience those blustery, damp days, one of the things that I appreciate is the coziness and warmth of a home. When you're outside and it's cool, for example, at night, I also appreciate gathering around a, a campfire. Oftentimes when I did that, it was with other people and we would roast marshmallows. We would visit as we would hear the crackling of the wood and maybe even sing some songs. I would venture to say that you also appreciate when the weather is, is not so nice to be warmed up by a campfire or to experience the warmth of your home. St. Peter writes, above all, keep on loving one another earnestly. Now, as I thought of those words, it brought to my mind the warmth of a good campfire or the coziness of a home. Love one another. Now, why did St. Peter write these words? It is because the world is often a cold place. And it's not just because of the temperature or the winds. The world can be indifferent to us, pass us by, push us aside, or even become nasty towards us. We have all received the cold shoulder from someone else. We have all been looked down by others. This happens to one degree or another to all people here on earth. And that's because we live in a sinful and broken world. However, as St. Peter wrote his letter to the first Christians, they experienced this nastiness, this hardship, because they were following Jesus Christ. Because they weren't doing what everyone else was doing in town. And because of that, they made fun of them, insulted them, despised them, and sought to harm them. It didn't happen all the time, but it was happening enough and it was severe enough that St. Peter felt compelled that he had to address this because the Christians had their concerns, their doubts, their questions. How do you respond to the anger that is out there in this world? Now, as St. Peter wrote the letter, he wanted to remind him first and foremost about the love and grace of God. That is something which can truly warm our hearts no matter what we are experiencing. 
St. Peter reminded them that they had been born again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That good news that our sins are forgiven and that we have been raised to life in order that we may have an eternal home with God is something which can warm our hearts no matter what comes against us. St. Peter also reminded the Christians that they have been brought into a family, the family of God. We are heirs with Jesus. We have an inheritance. We are not in it just by ourselves. We have brothers and sisters who are with us. And when we care for one another, when we have compassion for one another, when we show kindness to one another, we can warm people's hearts, especially when they're experiencing the chill of the world around them. This is what St. Peter was encouraging them to do. Keep on loving one another earnestly. There's a saying that I've seen on plaques and on other wall hangings. It is love spoken here. And it is a beautiful saying. When we gather for worship, I have to say that's one of the things which happens. Love is spoken here. But as we gather for worship, I'm reminded that it's easy to say words, but often a lot harder to put them into practice. One thing that God desires as we come to worship him is that we are honest with ourselves. And if we are honest, we have to acknowledge that our love does not always burn so brightly for God who created us and who redeemed us. And actually it does not always burn so brightly and warm the hearts of others who are around us. It's easy to focus on ourselves and forget others. It is also hard to be loving and kind and patient and caring to others who have, who have angered us, who have hurt us, who have insulted us. This happens in our earthly homes. It happens at work. It happens in our community. Yes, it even happens in our church home. Love is a word that is thrown around a lot. However, genuine godly love is not always on display as it should be. But one of the things that I always appreciate is that godly love is always shown by our Savior, Jesus Christ. He did it as he walked here on earth, and he continues to do it now. And it is actually remarkable that Jesus should be so loving, kind, and compassionate. Looking through the accounts of the gospel, you see that many people were attracted to Jesus because of what he did, his words of comfort, how he healed people. But as he spoke, he, of course, challenged people. And because of that, many people hated him. And it was shown in in how they, they treated him. In the gospel lesson for today, we see uh, someone coming to put Jesus to the test. It was not because he thought highly of Jesus. No, it was because he sought to, to tear Jesus down, to shame him, to hurt him. In his life, Christ was insulted. He was despised. He was rejected. In fact, The hatred of Christ grew so much to the point that they wanted him dead, and not just dead in an ordinary way, but in the most cruel way that they could imagine, death by crucifixion. And it happened. They nailed Jesus to the cross, and he hung there until he died. I mentioned that there is a saying that I have seen, love spoken here, There's another plaque that I've also seen, which I also come to appreciate. It is this. It was not the nails that held Jesus to the cross. And you and I, as we gather here today, acknowledge that. Yeah, Jesus could have come down from the cross any time he wanted. But love, God's love for the world, Jesus' love for his heavenly Father as well as for you and me, kept him there. Why? So that he may remove those obstacles that would keep us from 
from experiencing God's love, all of the coldness that we have showed others through our actions, through our indifference, through our lack of love, along with the words of anger, of insult, of hate towards others, it was placed on Jesus. If we still had our sins, because God is holy, he would have to give us the cold shoulder. However, having our sins removed opens up a new relationship with God. It also opens up a new relationship that we have with others. In response to what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, we not only love him back, but we also to seek to love others earnestly. And also to get this message out. This is God's will. It is also the mission of the organization of the LWML. As people who have received the greatest love ever in Jesus, how can we not do what we can to get that message out to others by showing love and kindness to others or even through our giving, even if it's in small amounts? And so we pray that God's love may be made known to all people and we support his mission work in our church and also in the LWML. I would also like you to think about how God can use you where you are at to warm the hearts and souls of others, whether it be at work, in your community, in your neighborhood, in your earthly families, and also in the church family. We appreciate being warmed up by a, a campfire or by the coziness of, of a home on a blustery, wet day. Remember that your love can bring that warmth to other people. Why? Because there's many things out there which chill us. There's indifference, there's lack of love, there's pain, there's sorrow, there's suffering. And yet, as we walk alongside one another, and as we show care and kindness, we make a difference. So keep on loving one another because Jesus continues to love you. Amen. Could it be that my God would welcome me into this mystery? Say, take this bread, take this wine, now the simple may divine for any to receive. By your mercy we come to your table, by your grace you are making us faithful lord we remember you and remembrance leads us to worship and as we worship you our worship leads to communion we respond to your to
One thing that the LWML is known for is their collection of mites. Just a few quarters here and there, a few little pieces of coins that you find about your, your home, and then it all gets put together. And it's not just a few dollars, but literally thousands of dollars from across the nation that go towards missions. And it is an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And we encourage you to continue to support mission work throughout the world throughout our nation, and also, as you can, at the ministry here at Trinity. As our service concludes, we invite you to pray the prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we were made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. Church, we bring me.
Thank you. 